Maybe the same settings in the second computer. Uh, I think if you have a second computer, maybe... Uh, I choose uh, also aggressive mode. If you have two computers, you can just turn off the uh, microphone on, on, on one of them. I think uh, the issue is because you have two microphones on, that's why we're getting- Yes, interested. I think you're right. Now it's much better. Uh, it's better, but the echo is still there. It's still there. Mm -hmm. Uh, it sounds like the cancellation is working, but uh, the echo is still there. Well, the best solution is the headphones, but it's not very convenient. How do you think now? Uh, it's better. It's a little echo, but it's better. Not much better than uh, previous one. Oh, now it's now it got worse again. How do you think uh, now? Uh, uh, it sounds better, I guess. Try seeing something yes. else. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, yes, uh, yes. I, I think I, I find the solution. Thank you very much, Ivan, for cooperation. Uh, <laughs> Welcome. Um, okay. Uh, so uh, I, I'm very glad, uh, dear colleagues and friends, uh, to be with you in this beautiful morning in Bucharest. Uh, um, uh, hello, uh, um, Mikhail. Hello, Daiva. Hello, Zoe. Hello, Leonid. Hello, Laszlo. Hello, uh, uh, everybody with, uh, with, which is with us in this beautiful morning. Um, I am pleasant surprised that we have a consistent audience with us at this moment. So um, thank you to everyone who joined us. And at, uh, is the first panel of the conference in Bucharest. Let me welcome you all. I will repeat this phrase in, uh, in, uh, in the lunch time during the, the opening remarks. So um, we begin with the first paper, which is actually my paper. <laughs> so um, let's start. Um, allow me to, to share my presentation. And uh, I need to confirm about someone to, uh, to have my slide on the screen. Action during the global pandemic. Uh, Sorin? Yes? Uh, can I interrupt you for a few seconds, please? Please, Sebastian. Uh, I started the second session, uh, but I didn't see uh, the recording button. Just uh, uh, so started from the uh, program as you just, discussed yes, it yesterday, but I, I, I pushed the yes. record button it's and now it's in record. It's but okay. I, I did automatically. I did, okay. I did manually, I mean. Okay, thank okay. you. We'll discuss Good. later about this. Thank you, Sebastian. Okay, sorry. Now uh, you're so, on the floor. Uh, everybody, everybody see uh, the, the slides? Yes. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, it is a privilege for me to be uh, with you here today and to try to understand a little of the charm of the narratives, especially certain narratives such as Cinderella, Romeo and Juliet or Pride and Prejudice. Some authors will say that we love narratives because always say more than they say and often sometimes else than they seem to say. More than that, while the speech is argumentative, the story is indicative. It does not expose a theory, but show a state of fact. 
relates a situation without two explicit demonstrative intentions and does not provide answers by stimulate their search. Not only does it maintain dialogue or relationship between the communicants, as Paul Vaslavic liked to call it, but it gives the audience a certain freedom to interpret the message. Therefore, we should not surprise that human mind is a story processor, not a logical one. This is the reason for why I choose for uh, uh, this quote for my presentation. Is a short quote for, for uh, Jonathan Hyde, uh, a prestigious professor uh, of psycho psychology and uh, cognitive psychology in, uh, in America. In politics, the ability of political actors to tell stories that resonate with the political message is closely linked to their political success. They are constantly, constantly looking for a simple and memorable story that will create strong positive emotions uh, among the electorate. Basically, political actors engage in the discursive battle for imposing on the public agenda the dominant narratives which can lead to favorable interpretation of social fact and actions and the reproduction of dominant meaning in the public space. Viewed from these perspectives, the discursive practice of storytelling functioning as very organizing principle of all discourse, according to Gray Mass and Cortez, of course a conceptual framework which people organize and understand reality. One thing is clear so far, politicians like stories at least as much as we do. We are returned to our question. However, how can we explain our fascination with stories, the fascination we have seen that politicians also benefit from? From this, we choose to start from the idea of shape of story, later known as emotional arcs of the story, Belonging to the American writer Kurt Vonnegut, you can see Kurt Vonnegut in this slide on the, on the left, on your uh, side. Uh, well known to the public for his works that combine satire, black humor, and science fiction. Of course, he did not think that his master thesis in anthropology at the University of Chicago, in which he exposed for the first time the idea of the shape of story, will be rejected unanimously in the Department of Anthropology because it was so simple and looked like too much fun. Episode which take place immediately after the World War II. Fortunately, a few years ago, a group of students in the Computational Story Lab at the University of Vermont in Burlington, USA, noticed in the simplicity of Vonnegut's idea an important research potential and discovered that all narratives follow the profile of some emotional arcs. Vonnegut had intuited that is not the reason why the simple shape of story can be fed into, into computers, they are beautiful shapes. From here to testing Vonnegut's idea with the help of computation, computational algorithm was only one step. In the picture, <coughs> you see, the writer Kurt uh, Vonnegut talk about uh, shapes of stories. An uh, emotional arc in, uh, in Vonnegut uh, expression was imagined like the graph of a function of real variable x, which designate the time interval of the story beginning end in a two dimensional Cartesian coordinate. Uh, let me show you the model of uh, Kurt Vonnegut here. Uh, the dependent variable Y can take the values in the range ill fortune, great fortune, and designate certain emotional states of the main character along the narrative trade of the story. Procedure for generating emotional arc developed by the team of researchers I mentioned early is based on a sentiment type analysis and data meaning of text segments of uniform lengths, selected consecutively throughout the text of the story, uh, which means um, approximately 10,000 words from a single book. The next step was to evaluate the emotional score uh, from each of such window. And for this, the authors use um, some kind of methodological tool 
which is a happiness index called hedonometer developed with the computational story lab at the University of Vermont. Um, I do not detail here uh, such methodological tool. We can see some details about the, um, the, the, the main structure of um, happiness index. So uh, we, um, we are understanding language is one of the most notoriously difficult problems in artificial intelligence, you know already. We semioticians know this very well. We have been looking for models for constructing meaning for some times. Uh, yet there are, are abundant clues to the emotion behind the written text which computer can recognize even without understanding the meaning of the words. The group of researchers, as I said, chose a, a corpus, the open access platform project Gutenberg, which contains about a um, thousand books. And from this corpus, they filtered the set of about um, 1000 fiction stories. They made sure that each of them had a minimum number of downloads. Uh, the results was surprising even from, from them, for them. Not only was Vonnegut right, and the emotional experience of the character in the narratives analyzed drew curves similar to tools he describes. Moreover, they discovered that of the many possibility, the dynamics of emotional arcs for all the narratives analyzed follow only six basic patterns, which you can see in these slides. Moreover, the most download, an indicator of the success of two's narrative to the public, followed by three preferential distribution type of emotional arc. You can see them in this slide and this, the next one. Uh, in this one, we have uh, another distribution of emotional arc, but you can see on the image that I have marked only the, uh, the three most preferable distribution for the public. In this, um, they, they research stopped here. They did not provide explanation for such a preferential distribution. We analyze each of the distribution of emotional arc obtained by researchers using a mathematical model of discreditizing the curve of emotional arc in a simple, um, arc shape trajectory mathematically approximated by a vector that follow the simply trajectory up, down, straightforward, and uh, so on. See the results in this uh, slide. Uh, but before we, 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 um, we construct an explanation for this, let's uh, remember what cognitive it says about the success of, uh, of uh, specific narratives. Um, Paul Zak, for example, you can see in this slide, discover um, uh, some kind of, um, of process in uh, cognitive uh, science is happen when narrative is developed between uh, uh, communication situation between uh, a diverse actant of uh, communication. Um, sorry, uh, in, order, uh, in order to, to motivate uh, people, say Paul Zak, we need to, to, to construct the story which develop uh, some kind of tension during the narratives. Uh, please uh, retain this, uh, this word, the tension in the narratives. According to other cognitive research, uh, for, uh, to, in order to explain the success of uh, some kind of stories, Uri Hansen discovered that uh, in the mind of the speaker and the listener is producing, is producing some kind of phenomenon, what they call the neurocoupling. It's, it's, uh, it's about uh, some kind of similarity in the distribution of uh, emotional experience of character in the specific stories. Now follow our uh, interpretation in the mathematical way. 
So uh, remember the distribution which we already see in the in the slide of uh, Vonnegut's speech. The Cartesian diagram, the two axes, good fortune, ill fortune, and the beginning and end of the story. Uh, I uh, discredited this uh, mathematical model in a much simple, easy form. In this form, we can see on the screen and the results is very interesting. We analyze each of the distribution of emotional arc obtained by researchers and uh, carefully analyzing things, I noticed that the types described by the authors follow certain mathematical types. The dominant emotional first one is the dominant emotional arc specific to the narrative, narrative preferred by the audience are the arc that contain in their structure the most inflection point or turning points or twist point, more precisely an inflection point at the first iteration, two at the second, three at the third iteration, etc. Of uh, the many possibility, there is only one choice of the author, Intentio Octoris in the terms of Umberto Eco, that determines such a dynamics of emotional arc which uh, with a maximum number of inflection point. Uh, you can see this, the distribution of type discovered by uh, American researchers. And uh, if you can follow only the visual attention, you can see the, these types appear only in the point of inflection uh, during the narrative uh, trade of the story. So, uh, uh, we we not develop a discussion about the, the definition of inflection point in mathematics, but in, uh, in in semiotic terms, if you want, the inflection point is defined uh, as the point on a curve at which the sign of the curvature, concavity or convexity is changed. This is very important for uh, developing the the emotional experience of a character in the certain stories is what is what the cognitivists uh, say about the tension in the narrative in mathematical terms this tension is defined by inflection point so uh, we test our model for narratives specific to political discourse we analyze the distribution of emotional arc for two special communication situations in which, in which the narrative performance of the political actors seems to have decided the political reality of those times in the opinion of many specialists. Uh, in this figure, you have the results for the first communication sequence, the distribution of emotional arc measured with the hedonometer of American researcher. And mark on the screen, you can see the distribution for the most important moment of the debate. For the, the same actor, uh, following the, the, the analysis, uh, the, the other uh, communication sequence, sorry, is uh, after uh, five years, uh, for the same political actor, in other political debates in Romania. You can see the distribution of uh, emotional arc here in, the, in this slide. And uh, the results is very interesting. Following the analysis, I discovered that the narratives of the same political actor in this discursive moment located five years away follow one of the patterns preferred by the public and described by the mentioned authors. Basically, it is debatable whatever we can speak of a narrative signature of the political actor who is in an important communication situation proposed to the public a certain way of a telling of story, of course, political story. In the end, I will say that the narratives that maintain such a dynamic the narrative thread until the end 
is the narrative preferred by the audience. Such a distribution of emotional arc creates only the condition of possibility for the appearance of the emotional connection between the reader and the emotional experience of the character. The inflection point that I describe here in our model function as structural stimuli of the narrative. In our opinion, however, what makes a narrative preferable, sensitive for the audience is the semiotic response that such a distribution of emotional arc triggers in the reader's minds. Therefore, I invite you to discuss, discuss these results together. Uh, thank you for your for your time and uh, thank you for your patience. Now uh, allow me to um, invite you for question or commentaries, or if you if you want this uh, question and commentaries, uh, we can put at the end of uh, all presentation. How do you do? You, do you think, uh, Sebastian, about this? Uh, I think it's much better to put at the end. But okay, if uh, the others. Uh have another idea, we are listening. Thank you, Sebastian, for your opinion. So uh, what do you think? Uh, uh, it's uh, everyone to think uh, is the moment to put a question or we can um, wait um, at the final of the presentation. At the end, at of, the end of the presentation. Mm -hmm. Okay, we, we, we put question and answer session at the end of the uh, presentation. Uh, so I stop share my screen. And uh, now allow me to, to introduce um, our colleague Sebastian Fitzek, which is a senior lecturer at the Faculty of Communication and Public Relations, National University of Political Studies and Public Administration, where he holds courses and seminaries on political anthropology, the public image of political leaders, and introduction, introduction to political science. Sebastian, please take the floor. Thank you, Sorin, for your kind words. <clears throat> so I have, um, I hope, uh, an interesting presentation about the personality of authentic uh, leadership. Uh, yes, my name is Sebastian Fitzek, and uh, <clears throat> my statement is that social media and uh, I can say mass culture uh, have taken away the opportunity for younger generations to form an authentic personality uh, specific to uh, each individual. Uh, <clears throat> the critical uh, basis of uh, my study starts from my personal observation as a lecture professor that the uh, Romanian school focuses too much on teaching models and less on the mechanism of understanding the phenomena presented. So uh, the critical vision, uh, my assertion comes from a routine observation and is not Lissomly disrespect, disrespectful. On the contrary, uh, I think is depending all the theories, knowing all the authors, is a correct didactic procedure, uh, useful for those who, for example, want to deepen the theories and the bibliographies. The vulnerability of uh, this didactic model arises from the conflict between memory and understanding. Memory based on understanding helps to educate and shape the personality. But learning by memory alone without a clear understanding or overloading the memory with data that does not help understanding does nothing to shape young people's personalities. After long uh, readings, in the field of political leadership, which I teach to young people in my master's degree program called Leadership and Political Communication, I asked myself, what is the use of so much information about, say, hundreds, thousands of schools 
and as many theories. Memory training and gaining intellectual prestige are very useful for those who want an academic career, career but useless for the others. Uh, the objective, uh, my mission in this study is to discover authentic teaching means that support both categories of young people. For those in the first category, the practical side of leadership is needed more. And for, for the second category, there should be essential references to the foundation lit literature. Throughout the fundamental role of the school, however, both categories have a common goal to discover the real personal skills in their call to a professional career that they will not later regret. The two directions enter into a single mission, defining its practical nature. The finality remains to be tested after readings, analyze, consensus, and above all the experience that each student will pass on as aid value. Returning to one's true self could uh, uh, returning to the one true self, uh, inner self, I can say, could be the solution to some of this problem. In this study, I propose to analyze the relationship between psychosocial radiography of young students and possible solution, answer, or methods that could be provided by an educational education in the university environment in this uh, problem. Uh, education helps to form authentic leadership when the school fulfills its mission and help the individual to discover uh, their own abilities. A well-educated personality is an assumed destiny and there is always a better version of us. The premise of education is that every young person initiated on the path of knowledge uh, it's like an unworked material, uh, unworked material, an unpolished diamond, which can shine in life or be lost as an undiscovered resource. It is on the credo that I base my mission as a teacher, and I wish this study, I try to put in order to content that will help him, inspire him, and above all, not disappoint him. A uh, research question, is the Romanian educational system ready to face all the challenges send the consumer society forms in authentic personalities among young people? And my second question, what is authentic, authentic leadership in education and how can it save future generation of young people? So a little words about big concepts. Uh, historical roots of the concept, but I, I will not insist too much here to gain some time. The concept, of course, has an authenticity and uh, has its roots in Greek philosophy. Okay, uh, I will go to uh, this slide uh, to discuss a little about the recognition of the self-referential nature of authenticity that is critical uh, to understanding the construct. That is in contrast, for example, to sincerity. Authenticity does not involve any explicit consideration of others. Instead, the authentic self, it's seen as existing worldly by the law of its own being. That's the Ericsson uh, uh, definition in 1985. Uh, as social creatures, the meaning we assign to the self are clearly influenced by the reflected appraisals that the defi definition uh, make it by Corey, and we know the theory of Corey. And such appraisals do not substitute, however, for the meaning we attribute to the self by Goffman, as such a focus of authenticity require attention to a sense of self experienced by the actor. Okay, uh, we study the authentic leadership uh, as a preeminent but problematic example of positive leadership that we use as more general warning against the current 
fashion of excessive positivity in leadership study. Without trying uh, to cover everything, we critically examine the principal tenets of mainstream authentic leadership theory and reveal a number of fundamental flaws, shaky philosophically, uh, shaky philosophical and theoretical foundation, tautological reasoning, weak empirical studies, of course, nonsensical measurement tools, unsupported knowledge claim, and a generally simplistic and out of date view of corporate life. Even though our study focuses on authentic leadership, much of our, uh, much of my criticism is also applicable to other popular positive leadership theories, such as transformational leadership, servant leadership, ethical and spiritual, spiritual leadership. So after Avolio Lutens and Wolomba, I define authentic leaders as those who are deeply aware of how they think and behave and are perceived uh, by others as being aware of their own and others' values, morals, perspective, knowledge, and strength. Scholarly and practitionally, uh, practitioner interest in the topic of authentic leadership has grown dramatically over the two past two decades. Running parallel to the interest, however, have been a number of concerns regarding the conceptual and methodological underpinning for research uh, of the construct. Uh, research, uh, scholarly and practitioner interest in the topic of authentic leadership, as I say, has grown dramatically over the, the two decades. And in the discipline I teach in the master program, leadership and political communication, I research for two uh, years on two generations of students uh, on uh, the effects of two types of teaching. One, a teaching focus more on the theoretical part, schools, theories, current theoretical vision, structural teaching of data and information. And second, a teaching focus more on the practical part, methods, psychoanalyt uh, psychoanalytical examples, exercise, practice, didactic games. At the end of each training program, I apply the same set of questions uh, constructed in an interview guide to provide me with answer on emphasizing authentic leadership. Uh, one moment, uh, because uh, uh, the second session uh, is calling me, just uh, a few seconds because I uh, manage the second session, yes. Okay, <laughs> they are uh, in the simultane uh, uh, time. And maybe I, I can put uh, uh, the presentation later for uh, someone who is missing. Okay, uh, the interview, uh, very short, uh, was structured with open and semi-open question. And the data received helped me to identify the differences and similar similarities between the two types of teaching in relation to the self-perception of one's own personality, following the following criteria. Uh, from the perspective foc focusal component uh, discussed, I use the transformational leadership theory, behavioral theory, charismatic, self-concept-based theory, uh, thermal leadership and spiritual leadership, and some criteria. Uh, positive psychological capital, you can see here, I, I won't read uh, uh, more uh, items, but you can uh, uh, already see on the screen. And I uh, can go directly uh, to the dissemination. Uh, I have proposed to keep this heading general to facilitate evident the comparison with other theoretical perspective, including uh, as I say, transformational leadership, charismatic leadership, and so on, which constitute the column. And in the body of the table, uh, I provide a solid black check mark in the other theorists includes this component, the score part of their models discussion. And I qualify light gray, but I don't have here the, the table. 
so if you allow me, I will go direct to the uh, second dissemination, the positive plural perspective. It's provide evident an extensive discussion of his moral component, describing an as an ethical and transparent decision. Uh, as I can say, by every leader self-regulation, I collect all the data uh, of the, my uh, uh, interview questions, and I go direct to discussion. Authentic leadership theory uh, in the conclusion include an, an in-depth focus on leader and fellow self-awareness regulation, uh, positive theological capital, and the moderating role of positive organizational climate. Uh, we know this, uh, but these are the results of the vision about uh, authentic leadership given by my students uh, by, uh, that I read, uh, that I receive in uh, their uh, answers. And the most important thing uh, is in the results. The final results were structured around two major different observations. observation. One is that the group that received theory focused teaching was less successful than the second group in terms of authentic leadership. And the second self-perception of personality, cognitive gain, perception and development of one's own skills, emotional interaction with peers, the teacher and the academic environment in general were scored higher by the second group who experienced a teaching style focused on practice and lesson theory. Primary conclusion, authentic leadership theory emphasizes not so much what the leader does, but who the leader is or should uh, be through practical uh, learning. The focus here is on the self and not on one role. As for instance, a new leader or director expected to take, for example, a drastic measure like firing or demoting underperforming employer. The conceptual uh, conclusion, uh, I think that we academics need to develop a stronger sense of collective consensus, consensus to weed out theory scoring higher on ideology than intellectual qualities. We find that the absence of in-depth, varied and rich explorative multi-method fieldwork, including observation, combine uh, which interview with manage and their presumed fellow along or proceed, proceeding C4 to build a, a qualitative uh, uh, way uh, to teach. And what in my vision is authentic scholarly attitude should trigger skepticism toward a lot of leadership studies that are presently carried out, published, and communicated to practitioners. Leadership studies needs to diversify and raise the bar of what academic knowledge work in and better distinguish its form, pseudoscience, theoretical load, for example, pop management, endless presentation of unusable authors, schools, and uh, theories. Uh, that's uh, my final uh, conclusion of uh, my presentations. And thank you very much uh, for listening to me in every detail. Thank you very much, Sebastian, for your insightful uh, presentation. Mm -hmm. Um, and for this plea for genuine uh, leadership or for authentic leadership, in fact. Uh, so the, um, the next presenter in, uh, in our uh, panel is uh, Professor uh, Dumitru Borțun, but I don't find uh, them is with us in this uh, morning. Yes, I don't find. Sebastian, uh, do you see uh, Professor Borzun? It's with us. One moment. I just check. Mm, I don't find them. No, he's not here. Maybe under cover name, <laughs> but I don't think so. Uh, so uh, um, we have um, enough time for question and uh, commentaries about um, the only two presenter 
presentation uh, um, until now. So now is the is the moment for question and uh, commentaries. Please go on. Everybody is invited. Yes, Ivan, please. Uh, yes, thank you for these pre two presentations. Actually, I have the uh, my questions about the first one. Um, well, uh, I also admire this uh, power of one goods scheme. Uh, it's very general, uh, or maybe we can also speak about the hero's journey uh, model or props model. They are very powerful in generalizing how we speak about narratives. But uh, if we are talking about these tools, uh, can we also discover some more nuanced and uh, more specific genres, maybe not these gener very general genres? Yeah, just a second, just, just a second, Ivan. I, I think we have another microphone open. So I ask uh, all the the participant to close the microphone when one of them is speak publicly. Thank you for understanding. Air for Sebastian, thank you for stop the, the sharing screen. Uh, sorry, Ivan, for my interruption. Yeah, no Please problem. continue your no question. Uh, so my question is, uh, uh, can we use these tools to discover some more nuanced sp specific genres, like subgenres, maybe that are not these general schemes, but more nuanced schemes, maybe some types of inflections, like different types of inflections or different, uh, uh, different shapes of this curve, because uh, it's, it's exciting to find these general schemes, but it's also exciting to find something <laughs> specific as well, some types, uh, subtypes. Yes, thank you for your question. It's a very interesting question. Uh, I, I think, uh, oh, no, it's uh, Hisukli. Please uh, close your, your phone. If you hear me, he he soon leak, leak, uh, close your phone, your audio phone. Okay, thank you. Um, yes, Ivan, uh, the answer is yes. Uh, this model that surprise some kind of type and token for uh, for emotional for distribution for the dynamics of emotional arcs of uh, character experience in the story is is one of is is general one is not developed one uh, from the particular stories you you uh, hello yanis uh, hello uh, he's only please hello. close your your phone okay thank you thank you very much he only thank you thank you yanis uh, so I continue uh, the, the, my answer. Um, this is the, the reason that uh, American researchers develop the uh, methodological instrument on the Gutenberg corpus. Uh, they choose the, uh, not only the literature uh, books or fiction books, uh, they choose a great corpus for their analysis. Uh, for me, is a temptation to, to apply this methodological tool in political discourse. Uh, uh, because uh, it's, my, it's my job to study in this area. I try to, to respect the condition of uh, methodological tool for, uh, for fiction, for general narratives, and apply to political narratives. So the answer is yes, this is the general model. And um, the results that can obtain with my math mathematical model, it's very interesting because um, they um, explain for the first time this type of distribution that American researchers propose in, the, in their studies uh, is, uh, is only one scenario of interpretation. So, um, I am open for a discussion about this. Thank you, Ivan, again for your question. Thank you. Yes, Mihail. 
thank you for your extremely interesting um, contribution. Uh, I'm, I'm really fascinated with this emotional arcs and, and, and yeah. uh, things which you presented. Um, uh, I, I have two, uh, two small questions uh, uh, just to, to, just to, <clears throat> to, to clarify. Uh, how, how do you account a clash of different emotional trends? Because in uh, political interaction, particularly, and as well as in dramatic interaction, well, let's say drama. Uh, in drama, uh, uh, the, there are protagonists who are, who are confronting each other, and interacting, uh, and their emotions could be uh, quite different, and their arcs, emotional arcs, could be quite different. How you account to, to, uh, to those differences? That's first question. My second question is uh, somewhat more uh, general, but uh, I think it's quite important because um, if you are taking into consideration, for example, political interaction, uh, uh, as well as dramatic interaction, by the way, too, uh, uh, we are not dealing so much with narratives, but I would say performatives. And how this performative uh, aspect uh, in, uh, is, uh, uh, what's, what's its true role? How, how it works in performatives? Whether, whether, whether there's any, 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 any difference or how, uh, two questions. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mikhail. It's very grateful for, uh, for your question. So uh, for, the, for the first one, allow me to, to share uh, again the screen with my presentation. So, uh, Mikhail, you can see in this slide, I mark the uh, distribution of emotional arc for different actors in, with different colors. So, my answer is uh, simply, for every narrative of every political actors, we can measure the emotional arc with this instrument, which is happiness index. I do not enter in uh, uh, so much detail how uh, it, this uh, instrument works, but if you, if you want, I, I can make some details. It's, uh, it's about uh, um, sentiment, is based on sentiment analysis uh, um, instrument and uh, data mining. The, um, the, the corpus is uh, it's feed in the computer and the happiness index, which is based on dictionary, uh, it's uh, apply on this corpus. And uh, finally, for every expression that during the speech is, uh, and for every relevant word, it's attribute some kind of weighting words in the expression of American scientists. And the result is display in this, uh, in this graphics. So the first question is, uh, is the affirmative one. Yes, I can measure for each separate political actor imply during debates. Uh, referring to the, the second questions, you're right. But we do not forget the, um, the, the main words of uh, Austin in the middle of the last century. Uh, we, 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 we use words uh, for, for do, do things, for do actions. So the performative dimension in political discourse, which is strongly related to the political narratives, it's, uh, it's a strong correlation. Every narrative is strategic one in political discourse. It, uh, and I show you in my research two such moments in different moments at the distance of five years for the same political actors who win the debates and, who, uh, and for which the distribution of emotional arc is the same patterns. 
These, uh, these results should just suggest us that political actors have some kind of um, uh, narrative signature, if you want. Uh, is, the, is the strategic narrative that they use in such kind of uh, political interaction. And uh, with, uh, with my answer, I hope that um, uh, try to make your expectation great, Mihail, isn't? Yeah, thank you, thank you. Um, yeah, it's very interesting, yeah, thanks. Very instructive. So uh, please, uh, it's uh, everyone to uh, intervene and uh, to put a question or commentaries. I uh, have a question. Yes, please. He's only <laughs> nice, to, nice to meet you and to see you again. Thank you uh, yes. to be with us hi. this morning. Yeah, hi. Uh, actually, I do not know very well about the politics with the semiotics, but first the speaker, mentioned a little bit about the semiotics. Second speaker did not mention about the semiotics at all, according to my hearing. <laughs> hearing. So what can sem uh, semiotics can be a positive, negative in political narrative or leadership? So how can you guarantee the semiotic can contribute better to your research field? Okay, thank you, Hison Lik, for your question. If Sebastian allow me, I, I answer first of your question. It's okay, Sebastian, for you? Uh, if you can answer to, to my second uh, question, it's very well because I manage the okay. video presentation now. Okay, I, I, I can answer, answer a little later. Okay, thank you. Thank Sebastian. you very much. So, Hisun Lik, I answer uh, in name of the Sebastian also on the second <laughs> presentation. Uh, for the first question, Hisun Lik, uh, I, I want to, um, to see the, the another slide that I not uh, see before during my presentation. And I want to make some commentary directly. Uh, related to semiotics. So um, please move at this slide. You can see Yuri Lotman, which is the, the father, the, the father of our meeting today and the for next four days. And Lodman um, um, wrote an uh, interesting uh, um, book about what he uh, um, spoke, uh, what he named the unpredictability or the space of explosion or even explosion, if you want. Lotman spoke about uh, this uh, explosion or unpredictability in the context of culture but also in the context of, of development of history. And also Lodman sp spoke about this uh, concept in his work in the art, narratives, and literature. Uh, now, I want to, to propose to reflect about this concept related to inflection point in my presentation, in my model, in my semiotical model. My inflection point, in my mathematical mod model is actually the explosion point in terms of Lodman. Why make say, uh, this statement? Because in terms of Lodman, the explosion is not a space of, uh, of chaos, of uh, uh, in, uh, unpredictable action. It's a space of, of many possibility. It's a possibility that the reader and the, uh, the writer, if you want, is try to make uh, a, a choice in her, in her writing. This, uh, this kind of expression particularly uh, reflects the reality of inflection point in my sem mathematical semiotic model. This is about what I speak in my mathematics model. In uh, only in mathematical terms is inflection point. 
but this inflection point in the in the narrative uh, thread of the story is actually the space of explosion from which the the, the writer make uh, some kind of choice choice which is the uh, the the very stimulative for the audience this is the explanation for cognitivist which is uh, synthesize the the hormone of oxytocin the hormone or the um, um, neural coupling in terms of Uri Hansa. Uh, so uh, this is my answer for, for you, his own league. Also Lotman in his work uh, uh, propose some kind of mathematical structure in order to demonstrate such kind of concept. Uh, so uh, purse at, uh, at their turn, is mathematic, uh, is mathematical thinker, in fact. They develop mathematical model to support the, the concept. This is why I try to do with my model to explain some semiotic concept in order to make intelligible the, the some kind of fascination for some kind of particular form of communication, which is the narrative structures. Related to um, uh, the question about the second, uh, the second, uh, the, uh, the second paper, Sebastian paper, the, the research about authentic leadership in semiotical terms, okay? Um, uh, of course, I want to ask Sebastian if uh, during this presentation, the semiotic dimension of this comment. But uh, immediately I remember what Socrates says about authentical uh, uh, leader. What say Socrates about authentical leaders? Let's remember. Socrates uh, tell us that um, uh, it's important to write on the soul of the others, not to tell them what they want to hear or they want to, to, to teach something. Be in agreement with your own speech. This is how Socrates understood authenticity. And my question also for uh, Sebastian, it's uh, how do you think that such a fact is still possible in modern times? Do you have the possibility to write on the other soul today in, in semiotic terms? Or semiotics is, is, the, is the way to open this kind of uh, understanding authenticity in relation to the other, to the others. This is the, the particular uh, solution that I offer an explanation in name if uh, Sebastian allow me for their presentation, his only. But uh, you mentioned about the logic. What is, uh, what is logic? A uh, logic, uh, Rotman, you mentioned logic. And authenticity, this is a logic. Uh, maybe if emotion are involved, maybe can be dangerous. You are talking about emotion with the mathematics. Does it work? Yes, you are right, his only. <laughs> Politicians already as discussed uh, previously in the intervention of Mikhail Lilin, that politician always, always make narrative strategies in order to manipulate. Yes, it's dangerous, but uh, with this type of instrument, with uh, uh, semiotic or logic instrument, we can try to, to, to discover which is behind of uh, this structure of discourse of politician. This is the, the main uh, um, uh, or, or just one of the instruments that help us to find what is behind the, the narrative of this politician. If anyone who want to put a, a question or commentaries, uh, I can uh, uh, just uh, make a few comments, if you allow me. Um, Please, Sebastian. In the same time, I managed the second session. That's why it's hard for me to, to be focused on the, on the second, on the both uh, 
video conference. Okay, uh, it's right, uh, your observation and your questions uh, from uh, Mrs. Uh, Professor uh, Hisukli. Uh, I understood uh, your uh, uh, point of view, your question. And I think there are, uh, even in political area, uh, there are uh, political leaders uh, that are uh, uh, led by authentic leadership, but they are just few peoples, maybe in uh, our time or in our uh, history. I mean the authentic leadership, uh, the people who doesn't use the narrative uh, uh, discussion, the narrative construct of discussion, as uh, my colleague Sorin uh, mentioned, uh, the leader who can uh, speak uh, uh, by heart uh, to the people that uh, believe in what they say, that can uh, be trusted, that uh, they are not cover any strategy in their uh, uh, in their uh, discussion, in their uh, oratoric uh, words. And uh, of course, I mean, uh, the authentic leadership is just a model. We, we can talk about a level that we have to reach by uh, education or by teaching. Uh, I am not uh, an utopist uh, uh, scientist. I know this is just an utopic model when we talk about authentic leadership. Maybe the authentic leadership uh, can be discovered in the lifetime of a person in two moments. When he is born, because he don't know how to lie. I mean by the children. Yes, they have the authentic leadership. And maybe in the second time by elderly people. Uh, the elderly people by any American studies, uh, we have found a return to innocence, a return to authentic leadership of so many elderly people. It's not exclusive, it's just a general uh, opinion of these scientists. And why? Because the elderly people are returning to uh, the truth self. Uh, to the inner self, and they are returning to the authenticity of their personalities. Of course, not every uh, uh, elderly people, but some of them and most of them are returning to this. The explanation is that that uh, maybe the brain, I don't know, or the way how we're thinking are uh, more related to the authenticity to be yourself. And this kind of feelings to be authentic is to not just a feeling, is a principle of, or is a way or a mode to life or a mode uh, to interact with the others. That the authenticity. authenticity. Everyone uh, of us uh, have a way to lead his self, his uh, self personality, his self way to thinking, to think, uh, to uh, teach, uh, to interact. Uh, and uh, every one of us uh, know that uh, the society uh, is the issues by uh, constructing artificial uh, uh, personality uh, and so many uh, type of personality in us. And we develop such uh, artificial personality just by fearing, we are fearing one of uh, others, uh, we are fear, we are not trusting uh, one in uh, others. And that's why uh, we don't, uh, we don't develop our authentic leadership just moment because uh, it is the end of the presentation. Okay. And now I can uh, return to you with my own heart, with my own thinking. Thank you, Sebastian, for your yes. intervention. Thank you, Hison Lee, for your uh, very insightful uh, comments. 
uh, if uh, <laughs> if already you can see his only ju just a second uh, to, to stop on the Sebastian remarks, if you allow me, you already recognize his only and our friends for everywhere, especially from Russia, uh, uh, because in Sebastian uh, commentaries, you already see the Vygotsky perspectives on uh, returning to the self, on uh, uh, Russian formalist school about the, the, the reflection about the selves, the, the discourse with the, the, the selves. So thank you very much, Sebastian, again. Um, it's uh, everyone in the room who want to make another commentaries. Yes, Criso Santos, please. Yes, uh, I would like to congratulate you both for your presentations. I would like to ask you, since they are very interesting, uh, both models, both model, models in terms of the pedagogy for leadership or the authenticity in terms of uh, just a moment, uh, Criso Santos. Uh, if yes. you if you if you want to put your uh, more closely to the microphone or directly to the mic your microphone, please. Yes, a moment, please. Um, I would like to 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 ask you how how you see your both of you how you see your models being applied in politics for evaluation of, uh, of, the, of the, for the perspective you mentioned. Uh, although they are very interesting, I'm wondering how, how politicians, let's say, or other or relevant institutions are open, are open to our models for, for extracting uh, uh, results based, based, based on your uh, experiments, let's say, and theories. That, that, that's what, what I want to ask. Yes, thank you, uh, uh, Chris Santos, for your uh, question. I already answer uh, um, uh, uh, some kind of answer before this, uh, with the um, related to the question of Mikhail Ilin previous uh, uh, intervention, but I. Um, I, I want to highlight uh, something new, if you allow me. Yes, you are right. Politicians uh, make, uh, make profitable this uh, kind of uh, scientific instrument. You are right. But this is the, for, uh, this is the, this is the, 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 the work of life, I, I, I can tell you. It's, the, it's for the professional one in the political communication. Um, to provide um, professional service for politician, but it's not uh, uh, sufficient to provide uh, some, such kind of model to politician to build a strong and persuasive narratives in front of the audience. I, I already told during my presentation that my model is, offers only the condition of possibilities for this. Uh, in this model, we can integrate the, the, uh, the, the oratory, the intentio um, uh, lectoris, if you want, or the intentio octoris in terms of Umberto Eco. It's not just the emotional experience of the character in the narratives, you know? So uh, finally, it's not enough for the politician to have access of, uh, we, um, to this kind of uh, methodological tool is, uh, is necessary to have the other abilities. Uh, one of them is natural ability to tell some kind of stories. And this is the, uh, one of the big secrets of uh, uh, Sebastian uh, probably uh, called the authentic leader. The credibility in front of the audience is is a, is a is a is a fact of multiple variables. 
Thank you, Crystal Santos, for your questions. So um, it's uh, we have another uh, question or commentaries in in the room. Please. If you uh, don't have another commentary or question, um, allow me to, to thank you, um, Sebastian, uh, 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 for um, for the presentation, also for my presentation, if uh, allow me. Uh, and um, I invite you to watch the next panel or the other panel, which is uh, simultaneously with our session and the course i invite you to the next uh, master lecture with um, uh, deliver by professor kim sung do from korea the sud at uh, 10 and a half it's a uh, very interesting topics and uh, invite you all to um, to assist them thank you again and uh, uh, thank you for uh, being with us at this important event. See you, thank soon you very much on the next panel.